Have you ever wondered why the bass guitar in your favorite rock song sounds so distinct? Who was a mastermind that helped revolution the role of bass in rock music? I'm talking about none other than John Entwistle. Famously known as The Ox, he was an iconic musician known as the bassist of The Who, one of rock's most influential bands. Entwistle was known for his aggressive style to the bass. This allowed the bass to stand out as much as the guitar in The Who's music. He was one of the first to use round wound strings, contributing to his distinctive, bright, trebly tone. He also contributed to The Who's songwriting. His backing vocals and occasional lead vocals added another layer to the band's sound. Entwistle inspired countless bassists with his innovative techniques and powerful sound. He would even use all five fingers to strum his bass. He was a legend his entire life up until his passing in 2002 at the age of 57. Are you ready to deep dive on one of the most innovative bass players of all time? Let's go. I guess I'd like to be remembered as uh, someone who helped change the face of bass guitar and being probably the only bass guitarist that uh, hasn't been copyable. Born in 1944 in London, Entwistle grew up in a musical household. He began with piano lessons, followed by the French horn and trumpet in school. His background in playing brass and school orchestras gave him the ability to occasionally utilize this in the Hughes music later on. He switched to the bass guitar to join a band called the Detours because they needed a bassist, and the Detours eventually evolved into The Who, one of the most influential rock bands of the 20th century. Entwistle, along with Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, and later Keith Moon, formed a dynamic group known for their explosive performances and groundbreaking music. His solos and songs like My Generation showcase his incredible skill set. A lot of people thought, oh, you know, in the early days, I was, less, you know, I was bored. Basically, what I was playing, I found very easy to play. A lot of my problems was I made everything look too easy. And Whistle didn't refer to himself solely as a bassist, but as a bass guitarist. Bassist, I'm not too sure, but a bass guitarist, you know. I mean, I've always insisted that I play bass guitar, and not, not bass. I played a bass like a, like a guitar, not to the detriment of the low notes, but... Um, yeah, I use a lot of top end, a lot of treble. He thought the bass was boring, so he was one of the first people to turn it into a lead instrument. I found bass very boring. I wanted to turn it into a, a solo instrument. He really took it to the next level. Bass player. Well, that's a bass guitarist. <laughs> He approached the bass in one of the most fascinating ways I've ever seen. He was very aggressive. It's like if slap bass met finger stuff. He would very commonly use three fingers. and loved the use of open strings. He would also play a lot of chords, mainly power chords along with some gritty distortion. When you add the percussiveness to that, it is a one of a kind sound. This is absolutely nuts. If you're digging this breakdown, please give it a like or subscribe if you don't. I know everyone always says that on here, but it really helps. I appreciate you. He often would treat the bass like a snare drum. Check this out. I used to play with a snare all the time, like. Sort of slapping slow. He makes it look so effortless. Definitely one of the greatest of all time. He's the best bass player in rock and roll ever, no contest. We need to talk about his unique tone as well. He would crank the high end. The only way to do that was to turn up the treble. The treble, the high frequencies, all of that with his aggressive approach led to something that really cuts through the mix. There was more beyond his bass playing. He also contributed significantly to the Who's songwriting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
And as I said, he was one of the first people to use Rotosound strings helping design them. The British company Rotosound developed roundwound strings in the early 1960s at the request of Entwistle. He wanted a brighter bass tone to complement his trebly lead bass style. He would change his strings before every show for maximum crispiness, and that helped contribute to that iconic Entwistle tone. He also kept his action very low, meaning the strings were close to the fretboard, and he would use a pick too. So what about the basses? He played many basses. Early days, the most I've seen him use was a lot of different Alembic basses, but I've also seen him play Fenders, Rickenbacker, custom Peter Cook basses, among others. But it's the really cool looking buzzard bass that he was the most seen with from 1985 on. Are you a bassist? Check out Bass Freedom below if you want to level your game up. All right, we gotta get some live end whistle, a quick snippet. I found something crazy. It's this isolated bass on Won't Get Fooled Again, but it's like just his camera. So there's some damaged frames and it's not the best of quality, but it's sick. Check this out. So percussive. Oh man, those slides are sick. He's so much more percussive than I thought. Watch his right hand. He uses three fingers. All right, I gotta stop it because he's playing this so good. I know they've probably played this song like a thousand times, but this is not easy. This is like truly demanding stuff with the three finger technique and all his woos and slides and his percussiveness. Like it is so cool to hear it isolated is a huge difference. Wow. I thought it'd be interesting to show him in one of his original projects and he is absolutely ripping. Check this out. Oh man, <laughs> so good. And that bass is so freaking cool. So you can see the use of the open strings, the hammer-ons, and the aggressive approach. That sums up Entwistle in one sentence, which you can't do. What a beast. Clearly Entwistle was one of the greatest basses of all time. Rock music wouldn't be the same without him, and you could say, bass in general. His legacy continues to inspire bassists, making him a towering figure in rock history. What a legend. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you. If you want to see another beastly bass player, check out this video and I will see you next time. Peace!